Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dorothy Mae Mercer. I'm interviewing a, an exciting lady today. You'll hear a little bit more about her in a minute. Uh, for your information, I'm an author and a publisher, and you can find out more about me on juliastalkstorytv.com or on mercerpublications.com. Our uh, guest today is an MD doctor who has her own practice. Uh, she is an Ohio baby, so I imagine she's a fan of uh, Ohio State, which is a rival to my my uh, football team, Michigan. <laughs> we can maybe talk about that later, too. And she has written some interesting books. She has a fascinating background. So without further ado, let us welcome Julia Bolin, MD, Dr. Bolin, to our program. Hi, Julia. Hi, Dorothy. Welcome to Talk Story TV. Thank you. I'm very honored you were inviting me here. And how are you today? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? I'm great. I'm great. Except for the election returns, I wasn't too happy with that, but we'll survive. <laughs> and I think I've got caught up on my sleep. <laughs> so um, how did you happen to get involved in your profession? In my medical profession? Yes. Wow. Well, my father was a physician and my mother was a nurse. And I grew up absolutely insisting there was no way I was going to go into medicine. <laughs> so when I went to college... I have a degree in socio-anthropology and a minor in chemistry. Uh, and I was in my last year in college, and I was walking across the center at Earlham College when I literally had, I don't know if it's a God event, but somebody put in my head and said, okay, enough, it's time to go to medical school now. And so I quick snuck in some of the rest of my pre-med, and that's all she wrote. It was literally, I think it was almost like a giving in to my fate. So are you really happy in your profession? I am. I am. I have a wonderful practice in small town, Ohio, and the, my clientele, my patients are wonderful. I've got a fabulous staff. Yes, I'm very happy in my choice of vocation. Now, I hear that you also do some traveling and speaking. Tell us about that. I do. I do. I speak on different topics for health and wellness, all the way up to issues on my book and promotion. And so I do a lot of professional speaking. So how could people get in touch with you if they, if they want to hire well, you? The, the easiest way to reach me would be via my website, which is juliabolinmd.com. That's J-U-L-I-A-B-O-W-L-I-N-M-D.com. Mm -hmm. Or you can also reach me through my office, which is in Versailles, Ohio, Versailles Medical Center at 937-526-3271. Ah, so you pronounce that Versailles, not Versailles, like the French <laughs> word. <laughs> okay. That is correct. We have Versailles, Ohio. We have Rushi, which is spelled Russia, and, or is pronounced Russia. And we have a lot of different French and German uh, colonies that were set up in Ohio, and they all kind of shifted their original names to uh, something more local. You know what? I always thought those Ohio people were a little bit kooky, especially about You football. had to get that in, didn't you, Dorothy? <laughs> I don't know. I think Michigan people have some quirks as well. So how did you get, get the idea that you wanted to start writing a book? Because you're a very busy person. You have a medical practice, and I see you have a dog. I don't know who else is in your family, but you're a pretty busy gal. And here you are writing books and doing speaking. My word. Well, I do. I have a great family. I have a husband of 21 years and two children, uh, 15 and 16 years old, so I am very busy with them. And my, my medical practice, uh, why I wrote the book has to do with passion, has to do with a lot of passion. Since I was 18 years old, I knew I was going to be writing these books. And I waited until I was mature enough and educated enough and had the time to format what exactly I wanted to say in my books. And my passion, to be honest with you, Dorothy, is all about trying to help people learn how to be their own best friend and to stop hurting themselves and start doing behaviors, whether it's 
eating, drinking, smoking, sleeping, whatever that are helpful instead of hurtful to themselves. And uh, that's where my passion is. And I have a lot of reasons why that passion developed. Do you care to share a few of those reasons? Sure, sure. Uh, this is not a secret to my family and my community. I struggled a great deal as a teenager and as a young adult with eating disorders, major depression, suicide attempts, and self-harmful behavior. It took me a lot of years to work through some of my issues. And with that process of, of undoing some of the depression and, and, and lifting away from the pain and the suffering and the, and the self-abhorring behavior, I feel that I've really come up with a process that is understandable, common sense, and applicable to everybody who's struggling from self-harmful or hurtful behaviors. I'd like to share that, and that's where my passion came from. I don't want anybody else to feel alone or not know that there's a way to get out of depression or sadness or self-harmful behaviors. There is a way, and that's what I'm here to teach. So do you find that uh, people such as this are gravitated to your practice? Do you, uh, your healing practice, does that involve some of these issues? Sure, it involves some of them. My practice is a typical family practice, though. I do everything from pediatrics to geriatrics and everything in between. But being in a small town, I'm also the local psychiatrist as well. And I do believe my insights have helped a lot of people. And it was through a lot of my patients saying, you know, Dr. Bowen, you got to write this down. you got to share this with the world. That actually gave me the energy and, and the, the weather all, so to speak, to uh, push forward on my passion. So how did you happen to take the time to write this book? Tell us a little bit about the process. With a very grateful uh, attitude towards my husband, <laughs> who uh, enabled me to take some time away from the family here and there. I'm an early bird. I'm a 4.30 in the morning get-up gal, and that's where my energy comes from. And so taking time out in the morning, taking a weekend uh, to go sit in a hotel, and, and verbally dictate a lot of my book to having a wonderful editor who would cheer me on and help me uh, fill in the gaps. So it was really about just setting the time every day for a long time period to get everything together. How many years did this take you? Oh, my. Well, the first manuscript that's sitting on my desk that I put on hold was about 10 years. The second book, I've been working wholeheartedly really just for six months because I really fell into this and the energy level has just flowed with it. So the second book sounds like the inspiration that we want to hear about. Tell us how that happened. You, you put aside the first book that you've been working on for 10 years, and then all of a sudden you started writing your second book. What happened? <laughs> it's a great story. It came from a wedding blunder, actually. I have a 30-year-old nephew who was finally getting married for the first time with the love of his life. And we're all sitting there in the congregation, and we're waiting for the vows, and we're all excited. And his wife says her vows flawlessly, and we can hear everything. And he gets up to say his vows, and he's shaking, and he's nervous. And instead of saying, to thee I be wed, he said, to me, I marry me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So what happened? To, what happened next? Everybody stopped <laughs> and giggled, and everybody's thinking about this. He just said, I marry me. With this ring, I marry me. <laughs> and it was funny. It was wonderful. And the vows, the rest of the vows went off without a hitch, and the night was beautiful. But what stuck with me when that happened was this huge light bulb above my head saying that is what I'm aiming for. I want people to feel the kind of love, honor, commitment, and how to cherish themselves yeah. so that they can be their own better half. And when he said those vows, it just clicked. So, the idea for this book was born. So, And the title came from that? The title came from that. The title of my book is, well, I have it right here is to me I be wed. Beautiful. Be your own better half. Learn how to love, honor, and cherish yourself forever. And and uh, the, uh, let me comment on that a little bit. I, I, you have the wedding rings up there. 
And hold on, one, one wedding ring. ring with a shadow. Oh, that's it. And then the word yeah. me. The word me is amazing. <laughs> the uh, graphics, and then the little curly Q over the two. What does it say up there in the corner? Up at the top. Is that what? You Whether you're single, married, widowed, or divorced, this book is for you. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love it. And and you you're not a graphic designer too, are you? Someone down. No, I am not a graphic designer. I knew what I wanted on my book. You know, but I did have a lot of help. There are a lot of authors that watch these shows, and I'm sure they'd like to know how you got that cover. With a lot of help and some wonderful designers through 99designs.com, I would recommend it for anybody who's looking for a business logo, a book cover, marketing and promotional pieces. They will walk you through step by step, and you can invest as little or as much as you want and get as much help as you need in creating your logo cover design. I would absolutely use them again. And it, and it is it is not free. They do have to pay for it. But you, you do have to pay for it. You get several different people bidding, right? Correct. You give them an idea what you're looking for. For me, I said I want a book cover. This is my concept. I know I want to have uh, a script on the me. I knew I wanted an elegant me on it. I wanted it to stand out. I knew my colors. I wanted kind of an antique sepia feel with some maroon and some teal. So I just threw that at them. And then 10 designers would put up on the website the different types of structural ideas that they had. And I would say to them, I like that, but add a little bigger font. Or I like this, but bigger on the wedding ring. And we just worked it over a period of about a week. So from the beginning of the week to the end of the week, I had the design that I adored and was ready to go to publisher. So now when you were doing this give and take, had you narrowed it down to just one designer or were all of them working on? About 18 designers worked with me. Wow. And then you ended up choosing one of them. Hmm. Then we hone it down to five designs, and then they have to really put all the little details in for me, and then I honed, then I honed it down to the one designer. And that one designer is the one that got the bid. So I put up a certain amount of money that I wanted, was willing to pay for my cover. And it could be anything from $99 on. And then the person who gives me the final design that I like and adore is awarded the the bidding prize. So they knew in the beginning that they were they were doing this pitch for a certain amount of money, and that would weed out the ones who weren't willing to take that much. That's interesting. Correct. Designs. They had to be committed to the competition. Yeah, 99designs.com. There are so many others on, on the web, and so I think people will appreciate that endorsement for 99 designs and and by full disclosure Julia and I neither Julia nor I has any money in 99designs.com um, so is your, where can we find your book right now is it available yet it will be available the book launch is going to be on February 5th uh -huh. And at that time, I'm not sure yet if it's going to be, I believe it's going to be Amazon.com, most likely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and do you need any more people to help you with the launch? You know, like uh, give freebies? Affiliates? Like, you're going to do the whole launch bit? <laughs> No, no, I would love to have some help with this launch. I'm a, I'm a newbie in the, in the publishing world, so I will be looking for people that would be interested in helping me with my book launch. Uh -huh. I will be looking for people who are interested in uh, be participating on their blogs or on their TV shows or radio stations, uh, you know, being a guest speaker. There are people out there who are launching their book or trying to market their book who would probably be willing to reciprocate, you know, if if they've got a mailing list or a, a blog or a website, they could put you on their website if you did, you know, put them on yours or something somehow. Absolutely. A lot of authors get free publicity from each other that way because we're all trying to figure out how to do this without – spending a fortune and no matter what you do it's going to cost money okay is there anything else that 
you would like to add before we close, Julia? Just that if you take the time to be sagaciously selfish, which means keen and appropriate selfishness, it's okay. Be your own best friend. Find out how you can maximize your health, your behavior, before you become 100% vested in another relationship. Being your own better half will only make your relationships in the future a thousand times better. 50% of marriages end in divorce. One out of every 10 prescriptions is for mental health prescriptions. One out of every 15 minutes, somebody commits suicide. We have a problem with commitment in this country. We have a problem with self-love in this country. And we have a problem with emotions in this pro- in this country. My book, hopefully, can help people unravel some of their issues so that they can become their own better half and their own best friend. So they can learn to love, honor, and cherish themselves every day. That's wonderful, Julia. And before we close, I, I want to remind the, the listeners that you can Find out more about our guest today on juliabolanmd.com. Is that correct, Julia? That's correct. Okay. And her launch will be on February 5th. Her book is To Me, I, The Wed. And we're really looking forward to it. Also, if you're watching this show on Talk Story TV live, you'll find that Julia is available in the chat room and can answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Julia Bullen, Dr. Bullen. Good day. Thank you.